understand your predicament. Uh, anyway, uh, today the Russian delegation uh, convened consultations of the Security Council on uh, agenda item situation in the Middle East, uh, but uh, we did address uh, the situation in Syria. And uh, uh, we started out by uh, noting that uh, uh, there are two things uniting members of the, uh, of the Council with regard to the situation in Syria. The first is our strong concern about uh, the developing crisis. And the second, the feeling that uh, the Security Council can play uh, a useful and constructive role in trying to resolve this crisis. Uh, as far as uh, Russia is concerned, uh, our uh, attitude to the way to deal with the crisis is reflected in the presidential statement uh, of uh, August 3, which was a consensus document adopted by the Security Council, and also uh, in the uh, Russian-Chinese draft resolution on Syria, which uh, was uh, introduced to the Council uh, a few months ago. So what the Russian delegation uh, did today, we updated that uh, Russian-Chinese draft, and we proposed to uh, the Council uh, a new version which uh, uh, takes into account the developments of the past few months, and which considerably strengthened uh, all uh, aspects of uh, the previous text. With regard to the need to stop violence, with regard to uh, the need to uphold human rights, uh, with regard to uh, expediting reforms, uh, and uh, especially uh, we believe it's important to give a strong message uh, to the Arab League that uh, we encourage them to continue their efforts and uh, uh, working together with the government of, of Syria and uh, uh, to carry out its plans to deploy uh, the uh, monitoring mission uh, in Syria. Uh, and uh, I must say that uh, the reaction of colleagues uh, uh, in the Security Council was very constructive. They welcomed uh, the Russian initiative. They uh, made uh, um, a number of comments uh, as to the, uh, the text of the resolution, various aspects of the text of the resolution. And we said that we were looking forward to working with them uh, in order to uh, to adopt a text, a resolution of the Security Council, which will uh, really bring about uh, uh, an end to violence and crisis in Syria and uh, uh, help that country proceed uh, uh, on the path of, uh, uh, of political uh, uh, reforms. Uh, so uh, I think that uh, I, I can say that we are very pleased with the results of today's meetings. Please. Can you just tell us what caused you to put forward this revised no, but you know, uh, you know, uh, as I s said from the outset, we all believe that the Security Council must must do something. Uh, we, we, we believe that uh, it must be. I, I hope uh, our colleagues in the Security Council also proceed from the premise, like Russia, that uh, uh, the role of the Security Council should not should not be to uh, to. F to fan the conflict in Syria, but rather to bring about uh, a conflict uh, in Syria. Not to exacerbate crisis, but uh, uh, to bring an end to the crisis. This is uh, at least where the Russian delegation is coming from. And we heard uh, uh, people say that, well, we need to do something, but in the absence of any other proposals, we volunteered our own proposal, and uh, uh, I'm uh, uh, very pleased that uh, it has been uh, received well, and our initiative uh, was uh, appreciated by uh, members of the Security Council. Ambassador, are you... Uh, in the past, there's been differences on the Council over the question of uh, violence and giving equivalence of violence between the government and the opposition. In your new draft resolution, is there that same equivalence of violence you know, between uh, all parties? You know, I, I believe that uh, there is no equivalence. I believe that uh, if uh, uh, colleagues read the text clearly, they'll see that uh, we were trying to stick to uh, basically the... Uh, the, the, the uh, attitude which was uh, reflected in the presidential statement of uh, August uh, 3. Uh, we'll have a uh, discussion of language. Uh, 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 some colleagues uh, may think that uh, uh, there should be different uh, phrases which would uh, uh, emphasize uh, sort of absence of equivalence. Uh, we believe that there is no equivalence and uh, there is some very strong language, much stronger than uh, what we had uh, uh, in the previous text, but also, I mean, of course, uh, we made no secret of the fact, and uh, uh, it is reflected in the text, that uh, uh, we call uh, on uh, violence to be stopped from all sides. We are concerned about uh, uh, weapon smuggling and, you know, the armed groups operating uh, in, uh, in Syria. Uh, as you know from the outset, uh, uh, our assessment of the situation that uh, was that vi various uh, violent groups were taking advantage of peaceful demonstrators in order to pursue 
uh, their agenda. So uh, those concerns were, are reflected in uh, uh, the, uh, the draft resolution, but uh, uh, there is also very strong language uh, in terms of uh, uh, no impunity and support for human rights and, uh, um, you know, the need to stop violence and make sure that uh, uh, it does, it, uh, the transgressions uh, do not go unnoticed, please. Part uh, of putting more blame on the on the government than on the demonstrators, and would you consider an arms embargo on all sides? You know, we are uh, uh, we have not yet started discussing details. We have not yet started discussing details. Some uh, comments uh, which uh, colleagues made in the course of uh, of the talks uh, uh, of our initial consultations uh, seem reasonable to me. Others, I can say from the uh, from 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 the outset, are not going to be acceptable to us. I can say from the outset, but we didn't uh, get into uh, into uh, that discussion, and uh, uh, I hope that uh, as our consultations uh, progress, uh, we'll be able to find common ground. And uh, as as we did uh, uh, in the course of the preparation of uh, uh, of the presidential statement of August three, please, Mr. Ambassador, I think it's it's a surprise for many people to see the initiative coming from Russia, especially uh, on Syria and the Security Council. So why did you change your position? And uh, is there any reference in your draft? I think there is no reference to the uh, briefing uh, from Navi Pillay uh, was addressed to the council. You know, it's, it's a rather extensive, uh, uh, extensive draft. Uh, various references can be added. I, I suppose they will. Uh, appropriate references in the course of the preparation of this. But uh, the fact that uh, we uh, uh, make this proposal does not change our attitude at all. I mean, uh, uh, Russia, posi when, uh, Russia position has been extremely active from uh, the uh, beginning of the crisis. But, we, you know, when uh, we say that uh, something needs to be done, we actually try to do something. So uh, we, have, uh, we have been uh, in contact with Damascus. We have been in contact with Arab League. Uh, we have been in contact with the Syrian opposition in various places, including Moscow. So uh, our activity uh, aimed at uh, putting an end to violence and... Uh, uh, bringing Syria out of the crisis has been uh, uh, very prominent from the outset. So this is also reflected in uh, uh, this move, which uh, we believe is a timely move uh, uh, for, uh, uh, for us uh, in, uh, in the Council. We think that a very important uh, uh, meeting is going to take place uh, in Cairo of the Arab League, and uh, we hope that uh, this meeting uh, is going to bring about constructive results, it is going to bring about results which uh, will make it possible uh, to deploy uh, without delay this monitoring mission of uh, uh, Arab League uh, uh, in Syria. As you probably know, uh, we also uh, volunteered, if, if this is something which uh, uh, we're invited to do, to add monitors from the BRICS countries, uh, Russia and other BRICS countries, uh, uh, to that. Why not from the UN? Well, uh, you know, now we are talking about the uh, uh, Arab League format. Uh, uh, theoretically speaking, one can think of all sorts of structures, but uh, this is the one game in town that we have, Arab League initiative. Uh, there are various views, uh, uh, details to be discussed, uh, details to be uh, addressed. Uh, we hope that uh, the, 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 the number of those details is going to shrink, uh, which are to be resolved, that uh, a solution will, will be found very quickly and that uh, uh, that uh, mission will go ahead. In the past, you've said that the Arab League initiative, while you've welcomed it, you've said that the call for sanctions was counterproductive. Is that still your view? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's, uh, uh, it's uh, a page from somebody else's book, and we don't think that this is, uh, this is a, uh, that has been a productive uh, or useful move by the Arab League. So, if... Yes, please. Um, in your draft, are you uh, condemning both sides? Uh, violence, both government you know, and the it's, opposition? It's, uh, it's uh, a fairly uh, complex document, but uh, clearly uh, the Syrian authorities are singled out in a number of uh, instances, as was the case in uh, uh, August the third presidential statement. Now, uh, if you don't have any questions on, on any more questions on this matter, I'd like simply to inform you uh, about uh, another thing which we are going to do in the Council. You may recall that uh, um, uh, several months ago, Russia, together, together with Serbia, produced a draft resolution on investigation of inhuman treatment of people and illicit trafficking in human organs in Kosovo. Uh, now, as uh, uh, we uh, were discussing program of work uh, in, uh, uh, on the 2nd of uh, December, we told our colleagues in the Security Council that uh, we might move on that resolution in uh, the month of December. 
Uh, now, uh, together with the Serb delegation, we have produced an updated uh, draft resolution which makes things completely clear as to who is going to be responsible for what. ULEX, special representative of the Secretary General. You know, so it's, it's, it's a better, a clearer version of uh, the previous draft. So we expect now to have some additional expert discussions with members of the Council, and we expect to take a vote on that resolution on the 21st of December. Smuggling of weapons is, is a big issue in Syria yes. now. Do you condemn uh, this smuggling? This is, you... this is, this is something which, which is incorporated uh, in, uh, in, uh, uh, in the draft resolution, yes. Thank you. Uh, it, it, is not, it is not reflected in the draft resolution. There were some comments uh, about that, but uh, uh, we'll, I'll leave that uh, discussion for later. Thank you. I, I, speak first in, I speak first in French, and afterwards uh, I answer questions in English, or I, I make my comments in English. Uh, je pense que, que l'événement aujourd'hui est un événement extraordinaire, puisque la Russie, enfin, a décidé euh, de sortir de son inaction et de nous présenter une résolution euh, sur, euh, la, euh, sur la Syrie. C'est donc un événement, elle a, elle a senti notre pression, elle a senti la montée de l'indignation, elle a senti aussi, euh, après le rapport de, de, de Madame Pilet, qu'il était impossible de ne pas agir. Donc, le texte qui nous est présenté est un texte qui mérite évidemment beaucoup d'amendements, car il est déséquilibré, mais c'est un texte sur, laquelle nous allons, sur lequel, la base duquel nous allons négocier. So, I, we do think, we, we, are, we were a bit surprised that eventually Russia has decided uh, uh, to move on the resolution project, on the resolution draft. Uh, we think that it's because Russia has felt the pressure of the international community, especially after uh, uh, the shocking report of Mrs. Pillay. So we are ready to work on this basis, even, of course, if we consider that this text is, is unbalanced. But I think that we are ready to reintroduce a lot of elements which are not uh, right now in the text. I heard a question of the equivalence. This text is, in fact, putting an equivalence between the both sides. This text is not condemning uh, the violation of human rights by Syria, which was condemned, by the way, uh, uh, in the, um, uh, the presidential statement of the 3rd of August. So we, we have uh, at least to be as strong as we were there. But since then, thousands of Syrians have, de have died. Since then, we had the report of Mrs. Pillay. Uh, and since then, we had the initiative of the Arab League. So our text has to reflect the reality on the ground. It has to reflect the report of Mrs. Pillay. It has to reflect the Arab League uh, initiative. So it will be a negotiation, um, you know, and we were expecting and hoping to have a negotiation on the text. Yeah. Sorry, you said that the, um, we just heard the, the Russian ambassador saying there is no equivalence. You're saying there is the equivalence in the text. Could you just explain in what way? That you know, in the, for us in the text, there is no equivalence possible. We have to really show that the violence has come from uh, uh, the Syrian regime. That's the Syrian regime which has shot down uh, uh, thousands of, of demonstrators. Of course, after six, eight months of violence now, some demonstrators are shooting back. But uh, we can't simply uh, say, uh, put them back to back and say that all acts of violence. Uh, the primary responsible of the violence is the behavior of the armed forces and secondly, the refusal of the Syrian regime to, to engage into a, a genuine reform. You mentioned, uh, Ambassador, uh, Ambassador Cherkin mentioned armed smuggling. Yeah. And I also asked if this is not the time to uh, have an arms embargo on all sides. Exactly. I think it's uh, one of the, the, the several very, very relevant questions. It has been raised by our British colleague and, I, uh, and, and supported by U.S. And I think, I think of course, it's uh, not only smuggling, it's arms embargo. I think it will be certainly one of the amendments that we'll, we'll want to put on the table. Last question. Thank you, Ambassador. Uh, is condemnation, is it enough for you to accept, or do you have to have some kind of reference to sanctions or keys? I think, you know, well, basically uh, what I've said is we have, the only game in town is the Arab League uh, initiative. We have to support fully the Arab League initiative, and I remind you that part of the Arab League initiative uh, was sanctions. 
So I think, and several uh, members of the Council have, have referred to the Arab League sanctions, I do think that the resolutions has, of course, to express our support to the Arab League uh, sanctions. Thank you. Three days ago, uh, we had a horrific uh, briefing by the High Commissioner of Human Rights to the Council, and we said at that time uh, the fact that the Council uh, remains uh, silent on Syria is totally unbearable, unacceptable. Uh, now we are discussing the situation in Syria uh, in a serious manner, and we welcome that. Uh, Syria belongs uh, on the agenda of the Council, the situation there is dramatic. Uh, we are engaging now with this uh, Russian draft. Uh, we think it's, a, it's an opportunity to bridge gaps and uh, to break the silence of the Council. However, we think uh, after a first study of the draft that it is insufficient. Uh, we need some more elements. We uh, need um, to embrace what um, the Human Rights Council has said. We need to take up what Ms. Pillai has told us. Uh, we need, uh, that's what we think, uh, to think about, to mandate our own, the Council's independent uh, commission of inquiry. We need to fully uh, embrace the decisions of the Arab League, not just selectively, but all the decisions. Um, and indeed, as others have said, we don't want an equivalence of the parties. We need to clearly say who is responsible for uh, the spiral of violence. And, and that, of course, are the Syrian authorities to put the Syrian authorities and uh, the peaceful demonstrators and the opposition on the same level is totally unacceptable. But we will engage in discussions uh, now with um, members of the Council on the basis uh, of uh, the initiative of Russia today, and we hope we can close the gaps. Uh, once again, we think it's high time that the Council sends uh, strong messages to Syria, uh, and in particular to the Syrian authorities. Thank you. ICC in the draft resolution, and what would be the main amendments you would like to see in the accountability is a very important element that we want to see uh, in in that kind of resolution, and that's why we have to think about a uh, Security Council mandated independent investigation uh, uh, com commission. Uh, accountability is, is, is a key element of any resolution. Just, yes, you said that the, the impact of uh, Mrs. Pillay's uh, briefing was very powerful and may have been one of the reasons for uh, the shift in the position we seem to see. Um, Mrs. Pillay has always called very clearly for a referral to the ICC. Would you make that an amendment in this text? Yes, the briefing of uh, Ms. Pillay was powerful, it was shocking, it was appalling. And I think it was a wake-up call um, to many, including in the Council, and so we welcome that now uh, with this Russian draft uh, there is Syria firmly anchored on the agenda uh, of, of, of the Council. As I said, accountability is a key element of any resolution and maybe an international uh, investigation commission mandated by the Council uh, would, would help to assure that. Thank you. Hello. In the absence of, uh, of my permanent representative, I would just like to make a few remarks uh, on behalf of the United Kingdom, uh, and then, if, if you'll excuse me, I won't take any questions. Um, I would essentially just like to echo what the French and German permanent representatives have said. The United Kingdom has been calling for many months uh, for council action uh, in respect of Syria. We welcome the fact that Russia has now also drawn uh, that conclusion. Russia has circulated a text. We are ready to work with that text, but let me be clear. Uh, we believe we need a Security Council resolution that matches the gravity of the situation on the ground in Syria. And in our view, the text circulated by Russia does not do this. Uh, we will be looking to secure a text that adequately and appropriately reflects the very strong human rights concerns that we heard in the briefing last week from the High Commissioner for Human Rights. 
we will also be looking for a resolution which expresses strong and appropriate support for the Arab League initiative. Thank you. I have a text of a press statement for you. Uh, the members of the Security Council received a briefing from Ambassador Gennady Tarasov that Secretary General's high-level coordinator on the 32nd report of the Secretary General in accordance with the paragraph 14 of Security Council Resolution 1284 of 1999. The members of the Security Council appreciated the efforts of Ambassador Tarasov and the important work of the International Committee of the Red Cross, the Tripartite Commission, and its technical subcommittee during the reporting period. The members of the Security Council welcomed the continued cooperation by the governments of Iraq and Kuwait and their high-level commitments to full implementation of all Iraqi obligations to Kuwait under the relevant resolutions. Nevertheless, the members of the Security Council stress the need for Iraq to build on the steps already taken to fully meet the, these commitments, specifically finding Kuwaiti or third country nationals, property and archives. The members of the Security Council once again express their deepest sympathy and condolences to the families of those involved. The members of the Security Council welcomed the active participation by the governments of Iraq and Kuwait in the efforts undertaken in the framework of the technical subcommittee including the joint explanatory mission uh, in Iraq. The members of the Security Council noted the potential for these missions to become an effective functional mechanism to fully probe the fate of missing persons and urged continued cooperation to translate efforts into tangible results. The members of the Security Council welcomed the government of Iraq's approval for an interministerial committee to lead and coordinate efforts with regard to the Kuwaiti National Archives. The members of the Security Council noted the Secretary General's concern that no substantial progress had been made on clarifying the fate of the Kuwaiti National Archives and noted that uh, their previous calls for greater efforts with regard to the Kuwaiti National Archives and other properties had so far yielded limited results. The members of the Security Council therefore repeated their call for an intensification of efforts to clarify the whereabouts of the archives through the Inter-Ministerial Committee and report the results to the United Nations. The members of the Security Council called for Iraq and Kuwait to continue to act in the spirit of the confidence and cooperation building process, which should contribute to the further strengthening of their good neighborly relations and enhancing of regional stability. The members of the Security Council supported the Secretary General's recommendation to extend the financing of the activities of high-level coordinator uh, for a further period of six months in order to continue to build upon the existing momentum towards the full implementation of paragraph 14 of Security Council Resolution 1284. The members of the Security Council expressed their willingness to consider this matter in the context of the review of the report by the Secretary General pursuant to paragraph 5 of Resolution 1859 of 2008. This is the uh, extent of uh, the press statement which was adopted after hearing a briefing from Ambassador Tarasov. Is there any discussion? I know that he, he ran for and won a spot on the Joint Inspection Unit. Does that have Well, any... listen, uh, unfortunately, you know that this is a particularly sensitive matter. So I, I don't want, I think the, the press statement is detailed enough, so I, I don't want to go beyond what is said in the uh, statement. And I'm sorry that I missed your statement on the Syria resolution. Is there anything, what's the next step? Is there, are there expert consultations? Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. I, I know, well, um, I think uh, wait for... Uh, for uh, our colleagues to digest uh, and study carefully uh, our draft. Uh, uh, some of their initial comments I've heard uh, after uh, the consultations uh, uh, show that they have not yet uh, uh, had a chance to have an in-depth uh, uh, look at our, uh, at our draft, so some of their comments were not entirely objective. So we hope that uh, they will uh, accumulate uh, uh, this uh, uh, greater knowledge uh, of our draft, and then uh, I expect that we'll have some uh, uh, expert discussions uh, on it. Thank you.